emphasis provides world class online IT training, staffing and software testing solutions to customers worldwide. H2K emphasis how we are different from our competitors. 100% job oriented training, hands on project work, cloud test lab, resume preparation and review, mock interviews, robust syllabus, one time fee and lifetime access to classes, access to recorded sessions of live classes. H2K Infosys has won the trust of thousands of students worldwide. For a free demo class, visit us at h2kinfosys.com. Now I can see that Meghnath and ASP.NET are printed below. So that is that is how normally we do. So we declare the variables as private and we will write one method to read the values and we'll write other method to do some manipulations, to do some calculations. Okay. So now now I have uh, I have one student details. So if I want to read other student details, I need to create another object, student yes2. So that is how you are completely reusing this functionality of class. That is use of a class. A class is designed to create in such a way that it will form its own entity and uh, all the student details will be having in that class. Okay, we'll define, we'll, we'll have a theory discussion in the next class. What is a class? Like what is abstraction? What is encapsulation? What is data hiding? So we have some concepts, theory concepts, which we'll be seeing in the next class. But before that, till now, is it clear to all of you? Okay, so now, okay, another question. I am a question. I am having a question like, can we assign objects like object one equal to object two? Yes, we can do that. Okay, so so I got a question from one of the students saying like, uh, saying like I have S one is called a new student. Now now. If I declare another student, like for example, that is a good question. Actually, we, we are going to discuss that in the next class. I thought we can discuss in the next class. So, for example, if I declare S1, S2 is equal to new student, uh, new student, I can actually assign like this S2 is equal to S1. Okay, so now let's try to print this S2 dot S2 dot uh, print name. And s2 dot print course. Okay, so now let's run this. So let me give the student name as Ravi and course as SQL Server. See now I'm printing two times Ravi SQL Server, Ravi SQL Server because I'm assigning this S1 to S2. So this values whatever I have uh, data name and course will be copied to this S2 again. So I'm printing name and course. Okay. So is that answers your question? Um, anyway, we'll discuss more about this in the next class. Okay. So now rapid fire questions. So I'll I'll ask questions and you need uh, you need to tell the answers very quickly. Okay. So now first question. So you need to you need to ping me in the chat window. Okay. So, int data type is value type. Okay. Okay. So now, uh, an object is blueprint to create class. True or false? I repeat again. An object is blueprint to create a class. So I, I told in a reverse way. Okay, I'm seeing mixture responses. Uh, someone are saying true, someone are saying false. I repeat the, what I said. An object is blueprint to create a class. That is wrong because I told in a reverse way. A class is a blueprint to create object. Okay, so a, uh, a class is a blueprint to create object. So now next question. An object is instance of a class. Okay, perfect. Now, next question. If I don't specify any anything like public or private, uh, by default, the variable is public. Okay, so by default, the variable is private. So, so all of you are correct. Okay, next question. So, normally in C-sharp, we declare variables as private. 
in any object oriented programming variables we normally declare as private and it is not necessary to have them as private but yeah but it's a it's it's a normal process so so it's true so whatever i said is true normally in c sharp we declare variables as private and methods methods we declare as public okay so now see if we if we make the methods as private then no point of having that method okay i repeat again just a second <coughs> okay okay so now if you see here this methods every method will have its own functionality so now this read student details method is used to read the student details print name will print the print the name print course will will, will print the course so every every method will have its own functionality so if you if you make this uh, make this print name as private then no point of having this method because this functionality if you cannot access outside from here then what is the what, what is the purpose of having this method okay so but sometimes you might need to make this method as private in that case you will access this method from other method okay don't worry um, don't worry leave it uh, so for now what you should be clear is I, 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 I'll just summarize very quickly you should be clear in all these things okay so I'll quickly summarize uh, just in case if you are not clear on this you can ping me the first point whatever we discussed today I'm going to summarize first point a class is a blueprint to create object second point a class will normally have class variables and methods third point variables or methods by default in a class are private if you don't mention like public or private by default they are private third point a public variable or public method can be accessed inside the class or outside the class fourth point a private variable can be accessed only within the class okay fifth point we create objects for classes using class name space object name is equal to new class name okay fifth point in c sharp or any other object oriented programming language we normally declare variables as private and methods as public okay and a class is collection of methods and variables and a namespace is collection of classes Okay, anything not clear in this? Whatever we whatever we discussed so far. Okay, so now I'm getting a question. Uh, I I got a question from Padmini saying like, if a method is private, can it be accessed within the class? Okay, so now sometimes what happens is. Okay, so here let's see here I have. A method I'm making a method called I'm making I'm making a method these two methods as private okay I'm making print name and print codes as private so definitely as these are private methods I cannot access from here because a private variable or private method can be accessed only within the class so so I cannot access from here so what I can do is I can create a new method I can create a new method called private or uh, public uh, void print details and inside this I can call these two methods print name and print course Okay, so now here, what I can do instead of this print name, comma print course, I can give s one dot print details, and I can give here es two dot print details. So here, this method, this method is in turn calling this print name and print course. Since this method is present, this method is present inside this class student. I can call, I can access these two methods, even though these two are private. Even though these two are private, I can access them within the class. So that is the reason why I'm able to access these methods inside this class, inside this uh, print details method. Is it clear? Is it clear now? Even though these two are private methods, I'm trying to access them from this method called print details, which is actually present inside the class. 
Okay, so now when I do this print details, this method print details will in turn call this to print name and print course. Okay, so now now if someone asks you like, uh, can methods be private? Yes, methods also can be private, but in that case you need to call them from other methods, from public methods. Okay, so now if I run this, you can see you can see that enter student name Meg and Ravi uh, student course ASP.NET. Make ASP.NET, ASP.NET, I'm seeing here. Okay, so now let's go back to the course content. Okay, so I'm, I'm seeing another question. So in print details, we can do, uh, we can do that uh, as student S1 equal to new student, S1 dot print name. So I got a question saying like, here, if I do S1 dot Okay, okay. So I got a question saying like in in print details inside this print details can I create an object like this student yes one uh, is equal to new student. Normally we will not do like this because if you want to access any variable within the class you don't need to create an object. Okay, within a class it is something like uh, within a class you don't need to create an object. Within a class, you can access directly. For example, if I want to access print name, I can access directly print name. I don't need to create an object. An object is intentional. An object will normally be created outside the class. Same like how you do it here. For example, when you go to a civil engineer, so 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 the purpose of this, uh, whatever he draws in the paper, is to to reuse it. So in that case, whatever you uh, so whatever he gives in this uh, paper. Uh, or, or we call as uh, um, a design document or a blueprint. So here we will have only only the model. Inside this again we will not we will not create an object of this again. Inside this we will not have like this. Okay. So so a class a class is like blueprint to create objects. And if you see the code, we will we don't need to create object inside the inside. Uh, this class so we don't we will not create object for the same class inside the class is it clear now Babita yeah that's a good question actually so students will initially uh, when students want to learn uh, start with object oriented programming they will have some doubts like why I am calling this print name directly here instead here I am calling s1 dot print details but why I am calling here directly print name so if you want to call any method which is present in a class inside the same class you don't need to create object. You can directly call print name. You can directly call print course. You don't need to create an object. I repeat again. If you want to create, if you want to call any method, if you want to call any method within the class, you don't need to create an object. But if you want to call any method outside the class, you have to create an object. Is it clear now for all of you? Okay, so who wants to tell about public and private? Anyone wants to tell any one point about public and private? Who wants to tell what is the difference between public and private? Anyone other than uh, other than I think Bavik has already told. Uh, Sandhya, we are not able to hear you. We are not able to hear you. So anyone else want to tell what is just one difference between public and private? Yes. Public methods. Yeah, go ahead, Babita. Yeah. Public methods or variables can be accessed outside the class, but uh, um, and it is global. Whereas private class and methods are can be accessed can be accessed just only inside the class, not outside the class. Okay, perfect. Can you repeat for public? Uh, public public yeah. Uh, I mean, public variables can be accessed. Uh, outside the class and it is okay i have a question here can public variables exist within the class yes okay so okay so you're right you're right so i i'll just tell what babita is saying yeah perfectly right a public method or variables can be accessed within the class and outside the class 
and private variables can be accessed only within the class. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Babita. Thank you. Okay. So now let me ask a question. An object of a class is reference type. How many of you agree with me? An object of a class is reference type. Yeah, it is reference type because because objects will have will be of different size. For example, if you see here, uh, if you see here, this object, whatever we am, whatever we see here, for example, uh, this object is small object, but this object is a big object. So so it is it should be definitely reference type because uh, the size is varying, like how it varies for string string data type. The size is varying. So so different objects will have different size so object is a reference type okay so let's go to this pdf again okay now how many of you are clear with class and object concepts i think all of you should be clear now and also we are clear with public and private variables public and private variables now we'll discuss on this protected and internal later when we are discussing about inheritance now i'm going to tell about static class and static method so we are going to see what is static class and what is static method now. Okay, now let me ask a question. Let me ask a question. So now, if I want to store two student details, how many objects I need to create? I repeat the question. I want to store two students details. For example, so for example, read student details print name and print course so here if i want to do s s1 dot print details okay so this s1 will hold one student details now student s2 is equal to new student and here i'll write s2 dot read student details and s1 dot s1 dot print details or, or what I can do here instead of printing here, instead of printing here, uh, yes, two or whatever. I can I can print all the students. Let's take for example three students. Okay, I'm going to read three students' details. So I'm putting here yes three. So here I'm I'm making yes three. Okay, now I want to print all the details of students. So what I can do here, I can actually write here uh, a comment saying like this to print. I can write here s1 dot print details, s2 dot print details, s3 dot print details. So let's try to run this program and see see whether that makes difference. So run this and enter student name. This is for s1. So Meghna and course asp.net. Enter student name for second course Ravi. I'm going to enter SQL Server. Now third student Bharat. And I'm going to enter HTML5. So now if you see here, I'm printing Meghna, Ravi, and Bharat. So all the student details I'm printing here. Now, if I want to store two student details, can I use only one object? If I if I again write uh, if I again write S1 dot read student details, what will happen now? It will overwrite the previous values. So so if I want to if I want to store two student details, for sure I need two objects. All of you agree with me? If I want to, if I want to, if I want to read or if I want to store two student details, I must create two objects. If I create only one object and try to assign, uh, try to call read student details again, the previous name and the course will be gone. Only the recent one will be there. Now, let's try to see. Let's try to create another class. Uh, let's try to create another class called Math Library. Okay, another class called Math Library. So normally in maths uh, we will have some methods like public int add numbers, int a comma int b. Okay, so now I'll write here a return a plus b. This is for addition. So, what else you want? Uh, what else you want for in math library? 
what does he want uh, for methods public int multiply numbers in the a comma int b okay so here i'll write here i'll write here return return a star b okay so i'm seeing a question now here someone asked me a question method need not be declared first in C sharp before defining them. Yeah, in C sharp we don't need to do that. But in C language, in C language, if you want to define some method, you have to declare it somewhere again. Okay, like this. If you if you if you are very familiar with C language, uh, okay, so you have to write like this in C language. Include stdio.h void main. And here, if you want to declare any method, for example, if you want to uh, write a method called int factorial, okay, and if you're writing something like this, int i comma fact is equal to one, or 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 if you write here like this, for example, int n, okay. So when you write this code, for example, for i is equal to one, i less than i less than or equal to fact. I plus plus okay so here you don't need to let me let me try to complete this fact is equal to fact star I and here I'm going to return fact so in C language if you want to write like this this is a function and inside that anyway you will have code to call this function so you are defining this so if you want to write a method like this you have to declare it somewhere above void main so you have to write like this int factorial int n. So any method, all the methods, whatever you have to write here, you have to declare it above somewhere. So you have to declare those methods. But in C sharp, you don't need to do like that. You can directly define the methods. You can directly define the methods. Okay. So now this, how many classes I have now so far? I'll just minimize this. How many classes I have inside the student, inside this console application? I have three. So anyway, program execution will start only in main method. So that main method is present in program, main method. So now I have two classes, math library and student. So math library is having add numbers and multiply numbers. So now let's try to have some other methods. Let's ask some maths questions. What is the value of sine 90? We are not able to remember what we discussed in the previous class. But how can we remember which we studied long back? That took 10 years back, right? I see two responses. Uh, anyone knows what is the value of sine 90? Just for a change, uh, let's try to see. How many of you know this? I see only two responses. None of you know the value of sine 90? Quickly Google, is it? Anyone, anyone else know what is the value of sine 90? Okay. Okay, so that's fine. So some of you might not be math students, so that's okay. So now, uh, now here we have add numbers and multiply numbers. So the purpose of this math library is to reuse these methods, add numbers, multiply numbers, or whatever methods we have. Now, in my class program, in my class program, I want to call add numbers. Okay. So now, now I'll, I'll comment this code or what we will do is I will, I'll comment this code for now. Again, we'll get back to this in some time. Now, if I want to add two numbers, let's say, for example, int a is equal to five, int b is, uh, or, or b is equal to 10. Now, if I want to add two numbers, how can I call this method? Add numbers. How can I call this method? Add numbers here. Can some of you tell me I need to create an object? So correct. So math library ML is equal to new ML1 M1 M1 is equal to new math library and I need to write console dot write line M1 dot add numbers. I can write a comma b. Okay, so let's not worry about this. Uh, okay, I'm I'm writing a comma b. Okay, now I have a question for all of you. I have another set of numbers int int c is equal to 20 d is equal to 30 
Now question to all of you. I want to add D, uh, C and D. So, so do I need to create another object like M2? Or I can use M1.add numbers. Question to all of you. Do I need to create a new object? I repeat again. Uh, some of you are telling no and some of you are telling yes. So, I want to add C and D now. Do I need to create new object M2? Or I can call M1.add numbers. Actually, to be very frank, I can, we can reuse the same object because you are not storing anything in M1. Are you storing anything in M1? Previously, if you saw student S1, you are storing uh, you are storing some details in S1. What are the details you are storing in S1? You are storing the details like what are the details you are storing in S1? Name and course. But are you storing anything in M1? We are not storing anything in M1. We are just calling add numbers. If you see here, math library is not having any variables. You are not storing any details. So there is no concept of overriding. So what you can do here, you can simply write again console.write line m2, uh, sorry, m1.add numbers, you can write c comma d. How many of you agree with me that no need to create objects? No need to create another object called m2? Yeah, so, right, so all of you are right, so we don't need to create another object because you are not storing anything in m1. You are only doing some functionality. But here in case of student, in S1, you are storing some values. In S2, you are storing some values. So, so here, if I execute this, whenever I call m1.add numbers, it will add, it will, it will, it will send a comma b values to here and it will return, uh, it will return, uh, 15. Now, when I, when I call c comma d, it will tell 20 comma 30 and 20, 30 will go here. Here it will be 20 and here it will be 30 and it will return 50. So now let's run this and see the difference. So I'm getting 15 and 50. Okay. So so you don't need to create an object here. So now I'm getting some questions to from so but we get the result for C and D. Yeah, we are getting the result. Here we are getting A B and here we are getting C D. That's it. Now so in case where in case where creating object doesn't make sense. So in this case you don't need to create an object. Because creating an object doesn't make sense because for any number of times if you want if you want to call add numbers, you can use the same object. So do you think creating two objects for math library makes sense? Creating two objects for math library? No, right, right. So so creating two objects for math library doesn't make sense because you want to only add you want to do some functionality, you're not storing any data. In that case, make that methods, make these methods as static methods. I repeat again, when creating objects doesn't make sense, you can make that methods as static methods. And when you make the method as static, you don't need to create an object. See now, but I cannot make this, uh, I cannot make this methods as static because I have to create objects. Because to store multiple students, I have to create multiple objects. But here, creating objects doesn't make sense. So here, what I'll do here, I'm making this as static. And I'm making this as static. So how to access the static methods is, you don't need to create an object. So you can directly, this line is not required. You don't need to create object anymore. So you can directly call here, math library dot. Math library dot add numbers, and again here I can write here math library dot add numbers. So when I execute this, you will see the same output. Okay, so I repeat again: when creating objects doesn't make sense, when creating multiple objects doesn't make sense, you make the class, you make the method as static. So when you make the method as static, you can call the method directly using class name dot method name. So you don't need to create object. You don't need to create object. You can call any number of times using class name dot method name. 
Okay, so I see some questions. Do we need to do we need to kill the object in the end? Okay, so we don't need to create the object in the end in C sharp. So it will take care of automatically. Uh, we have something called garbage collection. So that we will see later. For now, I repeat again. If creating multiple objects doesn't make sense, if creating multiple objects doesn't make sense, then we need to make the method as static. Once we make the method as static, we can access using class name dot method name. Class name dot method name. Okay. So I'm seeing another question. So let's see what is the question. Again, if I have to create data for 20 students, do we have to create 20 objects or just using a for loop? Um, in that case, so I got a question saying like, if I want to store 20 students, so in that case, I can actually create a list here. List of student is equal to new new list of student so anyway we'll discuss we'll discuss on this later so we can create a list of student and i can give name as uh, uh, students and i can actually uh, store the details in inside this list you don't need to create 20 variables like s1 s2 s3 s4 like that okay so we'll discuss that tomorrow so okay so now now is it clear uh, why i made this method add numbers as static very important because because in interviews they will ask you why do we need static methods if if creating multiple objects doesn't make sense we can make all the methods as static any other static method which you know till now the first class we discussed one static method where you are accessing using class name dot method name okay main is anyway static leave what main other method is there which we are accessing using class name dot method name class name dot method name in the same line I have that in the same line I have that yeah so right line is actually a static method inside your console that's the reason why we are accessing using console dot right line otherwise how we should have access you know we should create an object console C is equal to new console and then we need to write C dot right line but but that doesn't make sense again when you want to when you want to create uh, when you want to call right line creating object doesn't make sense so they made this right line as static method so if you see here if you if you right click here and go to definition right click on this and if you go if you click on go to definition um, where is that go to definition here so here if you if you right click on the method and select this option called go to definition so you will see that so let me do that right click go to definition so what is this uh, right line method right line method is a uh, is what is static method or normal method it's a static method why they made that static method is creating object doesn't make sense so that is where we create a static method so how do we access static methods do we need to create objects to access static methods so how do we access then how do we access static methods class name dot method name okay so in interviews when you attend any interview if someone asks you why what is the use of static methods you need to explain this if creating multiple objects is doesn't make any sense we have to go for creating that as a static method and the other difference you need to tell if you want to access a static method you have to you have to call using class name dot method name okay now if you think all the methods in a class if you think all the methods are in a class are static then you can make the class also static okay I repeat again if you think all the methods in the class are static you can make you can make the class also static so a static class can only contain static methods for example if I if I make this as normal class and and if I have a method called public void print hello and I can have here console dot write line hello so now if I want to access add numbers I don't need to create object I can access using math library dot add numbers but if I want to access print hello what I need to do if I want to access print hello method of math library how to access this can I do class name dot method print hello math library dot print hello I cannot do I need to do using I need to create using object 
so only static methods can be accessed using only static methods can be accessed using class name dot method name normal methods you have to access using you have to create object math library see now if i type here math library dot i'm only seeing add numbers and multiply numbers i'm not seeing print hello so if i want to access print hello i have to create m1 is equal to new math library and here m1 dot print hello i'm seeing this okay so that is the difference between so i ask a question a normal class can contain both static methods and normal methods do you agree a normal class can have both static methods and normal methods yes if if you want all your class methods but but if you make this class a static so i'm making this class a static now now if i make a class a static i cannot create object for it see now if i if i create object now see what happens math library math math library ml is equal to new math library and let's try to rebuild this so i'm getting an error what is that error now what is that error cannot declare variable for static type so now i repeat again if you make a class a static method you cannot create an object if you cannot create object can you access this method anyhow so we cannot access for that reason what they did was a static class can only have static methods so i i repeat again a normal class can have static methods as well as normal methods whereas a static class can only have static methods so i cannot have print hello here even if i have it i cannot use it because i cannot create an object for static class okay very important very important i repeat a normal class can have static methods as well as normal methods a static class can only have static methods and how do you access static methods we access static methods using class name dot method name and when do we go for static methods if creating multiple objects doesn't make sense you have to go for creating static methods how do you access normal methods normal methods we access using object name dot method name how many of you are very clear in whatever we discussed so far just till like 100% clear or or 70% clear or 50% clear or not clear whatever we discussed in today's class feel free uh, so that that will help me to to correct or uh, to teach better so how many of you are 100% clear just tell me how much percent you are clear on whatever we discussed today class object and uh, how to access static classes or how to access static methods what is a static class what is static method and uh, and and all these things how to access so definitely you have to practice for sure so yeah i am happy that at least most of you are telling 80% clear 90% clear or 100% clear so feel uh, practice a lot practice a lot otherwise otherwise it will be difficult so watch the video again i'll be uh, i'll share the video with um, uh, with h2k team and they will they will share with you now so i'll not be sharing directly with you from now on uh, i'll be sharing with h2k team and they will share with you so you have to talk to uh, uh, training at h2kinfosys dot com or or you can call them to to get this recording. Okay. So yeah yeah. So now uh, for those who are thinking like, let me quickly summarize what we discussed in this today's class. So so we discussed about uh, we discussed about class and object concepts. and we saw like a class is blueprint to create objects a class will have methods and variables and we saw an object is instance of a class and we saw that we learned about public and private variables uh, a public variable can be accessed a public variable or method can be accessed anywhere within the class or outside the class a private variable or method can be accessed only within the class and we saw that static methods uh, if creating an object doesn't make sense we create uh, we make that method as static and we access static methods using class name dot method name a static class is the class which has all the static methods and you cannot create an object 
of a static class and a static class cannot have normal methods. A normal class can have static methods as well as normal methods. So I went really fast or the summary. The summary should be like that only because you should be you should be focusing completely on the summary otherwise you will miss out. So so we'll stop here and definitely you have to practice. So you have to practice whatever we discussed. Okay, so any questions here? We'll spend five minutes for Q&A. H2K Emphasis provides world-class online IT training, staffing, and software testing solutions to customers worldwide. H2K Emphasis, how we are different from our competitors. 100% job-oriented training, hands-on project work, cloud test lab, Resume preparation and review, mock interviews, robust syllabus, one-time fee and lifetime access to classes, access to recorded sessions of live classes. H2K Emphasis has won the trust of thousands of students worldwide. For a free demo class, visit us at h2kemphasis.com.